So, for today, we're gonna ask you a little bit different questions than we do for most people. What we'd first like to ask you is just uh, about when you got your call to South Long and things like that. Oh. How did you feel when you got your call to South Long? I gotta think back a while. Um, I think I felt good. I, I really, I, I wanted to go out of the country. I wanted to go somewhere foreign. And I really didn't know anything about Samoa, so as far as I knew, that was pretty much as out of the country as I could be. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. I remember, like, right when I got my call, I remember thinking back to a trip that me and my family took to Hawaii um, two years prior. And I remember going to the PCC and going through all the different islands. I remember Samoa being my favorite one. Like, the people there were the funniest. And I just thought, oh, this is great. And even when I was in Hawaii, I was like, oh, this is my type of place. So, I mean, I felt I kind of lucked out. I remember if I got my wish, I thought I would either go to New Zealand or Tahiti. And I only thought that because that's what I knew, kind of. And I took French in high school. I thought, oh, well, maybe, you know, I'll somehow be able to use my French. But I really think I lucked out by not having used that French and learning a way better language. So, pretty happy about it. So, you, you didn't, I never heard much about Samoa before that? Um, not really. I mean, just like, you know, all Samoans are big, they play football, and this guy's Samoan or something like that. But really, not, not really anything. What were your first thoughts when you arrived in Samoa? Um, honestly, when I first landed in, well, when I first landed in Western Samoa, I just remember thinking, like, it is so hot here, and it's in the middle of the night. We landed at, like, 2 in the morning. The flight schedule was a little different then. I just remember thinking how hot it was and how in the world, or why in the world I was wearing a suit. But, uh, I mean, everything really just kind of fit with my expectations. I mean, like, seeing different, like, funny wolves, that's what I really kind of imagined, you know, just chickens you know, wandering around, that's what I imagined, so it was, it was great. A little different when I went to American Samoa, but I mean, Western Samoa is everything that I uh, kind of imagined, I guess. Um, how was your first companion like? Um, it was first companion? Oh, my very, very first companion was uh, Nathan Mangale. He's from uh, Mapsang Fo in uh, American Samoa on the island of Tutuila. Um, I was companions with him for about a week. Uh, he was a great guy. Uh, he spoke perfect English, which I, you know, was grateful for, considering I spoke imperfect Samoan big time. Um, he was real patient with me. I think he was going withdrawals from uh, his last companion, uh, having finished his mission. Um, but we actually started up in Alisa, and we were there for a week, and uh, he was good. Yeah, uh, we taught lessons, and it was, it was, he let me, you know, do principles and stuff like that. It was great. Did you have a tough time ever culturally with the Polynesians? Uh, oh, I think definitely. I mean, I, I always learned more and more after every companion. Um, I, I think I'm probably still learning uh, how that works better. But I remember uh, probably my very first, like, real native companion that, you know, didn't speak any English and my son one wasn't great. And we had all sorts of trouble. And I, some of it really was culture and some of it was, you know, just regular people having regular conflicts. But there was definitely a lot of stuff that I had to try and understand and try and, you know, I guess be more thoughtful about. What would you say was the greatest blessing from your mission? And what would you say was the greatest difficulty on your mission? That's probably the difficulties we have on high note. <laughs> I really think that's probably the answer, I think, to both those questions, probably the same thing. Um, I think my greatest blessings came from my greatest difficulties in my mission. Um, just those hard times. I mean, I'm, I'm specifically thinking about that one missionary that I, that first sort of real native Samoan I was with. I remember we had lots of hard times of just trying to get along with one another. And I just remember thinking, like, you know, what am I ever going to get out of this? But, I mean, that companionship still stands out in my mind as a real turning point in my mission, a real growth opportunity that I had, and I wouldn't have gotten it otherwise. And it all came from just that really difficult relationship that we'd had together. But I came out of it, you know, much better missionary, you know, much better speaker in the language, much more committed, and just, I think, uh, more confident even, which I never would have supposed, I guess. Is that when you first decided you wanted to be an MTC teacher, or is that why you were in the 
MTC or even before then? I remember when I was in the MTC, I wanted to come back and be an MTC teacher. I just thought it was, I had one MTC teacher, I just thought he was amazing. Um, his name was Ben B. Singer. Everyone called him Be Senga. And like, I bet you could still go down to see Umu and you could still go over to Bango and you could still hear stories about Be Senga. He's really never going to die. And I had no idea in the MTC that that's the kind of, you know, legend that he had become over here. But I just remember him just being like a super dedicated teacher. I just remember thinking like, oh, I've gotten so much from him. And when I first got on the mission, and I, and I, and, you know, I had gone to BYU before, and I thought, oh, this would be a great student job. You know, I thought that as well. But when I, you know, first came here, and as I kept going throughout the mission, I just thought this would be a great way to be able to give back, is when I go back, you know, to be able to be an MTC teacher and be able to sort of, I guess, contribute back to the mission I left. How do you feel like your relationship with the Savior changed over the course of your mission? Um, I think it definitely matured, I would say. I, that's how I describe it. In the sense that it became more real, it became something I, that was more tangible to me. It became something that I could rely on. It became something that I could see, you know, actual effects from. So, and beforehand, it's not, I don't think it was a bad relationship, but it was never something I had to really rely on. It was never something I, I, I think I took it for granted a lot, I guess is how I'd phrase it. Is there any particular experience from your mission that stands out as an expression of employment of learning and growing? And please take your time if you need to think about it. Learning and growing. Um, I really, I can, I can almost think about any point in my mission. I mean, there's so, there's so many that stand out in my mind of, of just real eye-openers. And it's kind of sad because it seems like I got them all the time back then. I don't think I get them as often now. It's kind of sad. But I mean, like, I can just think about just about every area that I was in. I have, you know, I have some memory of something that happened in a lesson that I learned and just something that really, you know, broadsided me in a way that I thought was really good in the sense that like it really opened my eyes to something new and that, you know, something I needed to work on. Almost every single companionship I can really, probably every single companionship I can think of that in every single area I can really think of that. And, I mean, do you want me to name specific ones or? If you have a story you'd like to share, that'd be wonderful. Uh, since we're in Lotso Bar, Besenga right now, I remember uh, the companion I was first senior to was uh, Elder Herman Mathis. Um, before his mission, he went by Herman Leal. Um, but, I mean, that guy was just, to me, he was just an example of humility. I mean, I look back at some of the things that we did early on, I'm just like, oh man, he's so humble, he really should have told me to straighten up, he really should have, you know, called me out on this, that, or the other, but he was so good, he was so patient with me, and, you know, he just really worked with me, and we did some great work there, and he really just taught me an example of, you know, how much kindness can do, um, and just the effects of that, and the effects of humility, and I look back, and I'm still, he's my favorite companion, my whole mission. And, you know, we were together five months and we just did some, like, I thought some really great work and he was just such an example to me. So that's, I don't know, one. Um, what are some, some of the things you learned about or saw about the church and saw them all as you were serving here? That's a good question. I think the thing that first comes to mind when you ask that question, um, I didn't grow up in you know, Utah, where the church was founded, it's been there for a long, long time or anything like that, but um, where I grew up, there's established stakes, there's people that have been in the church for generations and generations, and there's definitely this feeling of, you know, oh, this is how it goes, and this is how it always should be, and it shouldn't be that hard to make it, everything run so smooth and so right, but I think one thing I learned in my mission, even though the church has been in Samuel for so long, and there's tons of people that have been here for generations and generations, but when I would be working out, maybe some of the, the uh, more, uh, I guess, less populated villages and the, um, where the church is still fairly new, um, I really started, you know, realizing that, you know, the Lord works with what he's got and, and it takes time to start those generations and generations that, you know, when, you know, I was working in a ward where, I mean, really, the leadership, we were all pretty much pioneers, they're all converts, and it was definitely an eye-opener for me in the sense that, you know, it's not like the Lord just snaps his fingers and all of a sudden he's got all these perfect saints. That's not how it works. He, he takes who he's got and he teaches them and they have to make mistakes and they have to learn and they have to grow and they have to, you know, mess up and I have to mess up too. And it, that, that was something I actually had to learn. I didn't just know it. Um, after, so after your mission, did you start... Teaching 
right at MCC? Uh, see, I got home November 2003. I started school in January 2001. And so right away, I'd, I'd applied to the MCC. And although that's where I wanted to work, I, either way, I needed to work somewhere. And uh, I remember, uh, like, the whole month of January, I didn't hear back from him. So I would call him every so often because I would just ask him, like, hey, can you let me know within such and such time? He said, yeah, we'll let you know by the end of next week. And I remember I had to keep calling back Rich Hoops over and over and again. And finally, I think they probably just like, thought, hey, we're not going to find anyone better. <laughs> so uh, they just, uh, yeah, so I started working there in February, and that's when I taught in my first district. Did you have a hard transition point after your mission? That was that. Uh, oh, I days. definitely did. I, uh, <laughs> when I came home, it was the middle of winter, and I had just come home from a tropical island where it was warm and green and nice, and then I, Came home to a dark, gloomy winter. Eastern Washington is overcast and cold and cloudy, and so is Utah during the winter. And it was just really, really hard because I don't know. I think the seasonal depression plus just you know leaving, you know, Samoa in general. It, it was definitely a tough thing. I think. That's wonderful. So, what brings you back to Samoa? Uh, well, I had wanted to come back ever since I left. Um, but I hadn't really had the you know, opportunity or funds or just the timing until uh, just recently. And uh, right after I graduated from BYU in April, there was a group that was going at the end of August, and I was going to go with them. But I had lost my passport, so, and, I, and my job wanted me to start a month earlier than I had previously thought. So that fell down, or, you know, fell through the tubes, and so I kind of set it out to come this summer. And then, uh, you know, I wasn't sure how cemented that plan was going to be. I was going to have my brother come with me. But I noticed that in the whole month of May, I wasn't scheduling any clients at work. And the rest of the summer is pretty booked. So I thought, you know what, it's going to happen. It's going to happen now. And then, uh, you know, randomly I heard from, you know, Jacob Stark that they were coming here and they were doing this project that sounded interesting to me. And, you know, I just thought any chance to come back to Samoa was a good chance. And so that's kind of how I got on board. How have you felt coming back to Samoa? Has anything stood out to you? Uh, it's just, it just feels good. It feels like home. Now, what would you say is the greatest difficulty that the Saints face here in the Samoa? Um, good question. Um, the greatest, I mean, like, I don't, I'm not sure that I see any particularly unique problem to the Saints here as opposed to anywhere else in the world, but I just think in general it's just on an individual basis doing what is right and doing what needs to be done and you know, having that same attitude be propagated throughout every social interaction including those you know, with your non-member friends and I, I, just in general I think for every, like, like everyone else personal worthiness and the way you conduct yourself personally has a huge effect on how the church will grow socially. No, I'm sure they're going to bounce around a little bit, but were you here in the temple for a I was not on this island, but I was on my mission. I was actually in American Samoa serving in Bama Bama when uh, the temple burned down. What was your reaction? What were the reactions of those around you when it happened? Uh, I thought it was, I remember I was at a morning for Fangla with a family that was living in Bama, and I remember the, the, the Fanitua, the the uh, sister, you know, came in. And she, you know, she said she'd heard on the radio that, you know, the temple had burned. She was just really distraught, and I, you know, I didn't really believe it at first. I was like, oh no, you know, I heard rumors throughout my whole mission. You know, just, I just thought this was just, you know, another one of those rumors. But sure enough, later on that day, we actually saw pictures, and maybe it was the next day we saw pictures of it, just huge flames in the uh, of the temple being on fire. I was just, I was just taken aback. And then, especially confusing because while I was here, it didn't seem like uh, an answer for why uh, the fire had started and it ever really came out. In closing, would you mind uh, sharing your testimony with us? Uh, sure. Um, I mean, I, I think my testimony is probably just as simple as anyone's. Just, um, you know, I've seen the gospel in my life. I've seen it and its effects, and I, and I know 
that you know when I'm living in accordance with the gospel, I'm, I'm happier, I'm better. I feel the Spirit. I really do receive revelation. I receive, you know, just direction and what I need to be and where I need to go. And you know, when I'm not doing so well, that you know, I definitely feel the absence of that. And to me, I mean, like I just look around. I'm just, you know, the way to be happy is by living the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know Joseph Smith was a prophet. Um, I know that he received revelation from our Father in Heaven. I know that he saw our Father in Heaven and His Son Jesus Christ. And I know that from you know that instance, the church was able to restore and it's with us today. And that's you know, to, to me, that's you know the way to be happy, the way to return to our Father in Heaven. It's not just happiness in hereafter; it's happiness here. Um, but it's pretty simple as that. I guess I say this in the name of Christ, Amen.